here how it works. You just press a button and it goes into special Mackey mode. Now it controls parameters of the current plugin on the screen. You see it here. You go to another plugin, you press a button, you control these parameters. You go to another, just hit the button, and so here are the knobs that are turning. Hi, Ilya here, and I want to tell you a little bit about controlling Cubase plugins with a MIDI controller. Uh, so one of the features that Cubase has is this remote control editor feature that works only with some controllers, with Mackie Control, Steinberg, Houston, and so on. Unfortunately, I don't have one. Uh, I'd like to, but it's too big and too pricey. I have another kind of controller that I tried to uh, use as a Mackie controller to control uh, plugins. Uh, this little guy is Steinberg QC. It can do a few things. It can be a quick controller, control quick controls on the channel. It can be uh, the Q controller in Cubase and a, a simple MIDI controller. Uh, so I tried to write a script that gets messages from uh, this controller and transforms these messages into Mackie control MIDI messages so that we can emulate Mackie on Cubase. You just press a button and it goes into special Mackie mode. Now it controls parameters of the current plugin on the screen. You see it here. You go to another plugin, you press a button, you control these parameters. You go to another, just hit the button, and so here are the knobs that are turning. On regular Mackie control, to do this you have to go to some channel, you have to press insert, then turn the knob to insert number 4, for example, and then press page to go to the first page of controlling parameters. In this version of the script, it just does all this automatically for you. You just hover the mouse over the plugin, you press a button, and the script reads the name of the channel and the number of the insert on the channel and do does everything for you. Just presses a virtual button on Mac on virtual Mackie control a few times, so it goes to that channel and to that uh, insert. Here is a virtual display where you can read in which mode you are on Mackie. Using it as a pen control, you can see everything goes on. Yeah, you can control sands as in regular Mackie. Yeah, yeah. And you can go to flip mode and use knobs as faders. This is really nice. So all this is done using uh, two separate pieces of software. One is uh, called Loop MIDI, which is a program to create virtual MIDI ports. And here are uh, a few. Another program called Autohot Key. It is a program that lets you run scripts on your computer that reads keyboard or mouse or even MIDI uh, controllers and can generate other keys or other things and can really do a lot of stuff, create windows uh, on screen, create some MIDI messages. And uh, instead of reading real CMC channel messages, it reads uh, CMC messages that are passing through Autohot key script. This is what it looks like. This is a script that reads uh, MIDI messages from real controller and uh, sends MIDI messages to Cubase. Nice little things uh, that you can do with it. Uh, automating the mouse movements, for example. You are controlling this plugin. You are turning some knobs. You are doing what you want, listening to the music, and you want to hear it bypassed. You just press the button, and the mouse automatically goes 
bypasses the current plugin. This is really useful. So this is a nice thing about upgrading CMC QC. Now it really works a lot. If you miss the Q button, suddenly want to use it as really it was designed to use it as a Q controller. You can press it and hold and it goes to a normal EQ mode where you can control standard Cubase EQ, but I don't really use it often. On this page, on Remote Control Editor, you can decide which exactly parameters you want to use with this controller. So, after having fun with this one, I wanted to modify uh, this one <laughs> a little bit. The same idea, you control what it sends to Cubase through auto hotkey. It receives messages from it and resends them to Cubase. What it can do, uh, usually it just controls volume and panorama. But what about volume? It's not so useful because you have to see the red light, touch it exactly where it is. You can't just feel the knob and move it, so it's not really useful. When you need to control it very precisely, you, it's hard to do. You can do it with shift, pressing the shift button, but it's not really handy and it's not very nice. And the resolution is too small. This is too big, this is too small. Okay, there is another mode. It can go to jump mode and you press it here and you can jump where you press, but it's also not very useful. So I thought it would be cool to modify it and make it work as a relative volume controller. So that's what I did. You press this button, it goes to a special mode, shows it by lighting up the relative volume mode. So you can grab it anywhere now and it controls the relative volume of the channel. You can zoom it in and control it in bigger steps or really zoom out and control it in very little steps very precisely. Another feature is this panorama knob. Uh, it usually needs to be rotated a few times to get 100% uh, right, 100% left. I accelerated it, so if you turn it very quickly, it goes really fast to left or right. If you turn it slowly, it goes slowly. This is great. This is really useful. Now I can control volume uh, with more precision and I don't have to look at this. I can touch it anywhere. Uh, but I thought it would be cool to uh, really control plugins with this guy too. So uh, what I did, it can go to another mode <laughs> once more and now it controls a mouse. You press it and a mouse is pressed. You drag it up or down and your mouse is also dragged up or down. So this way you can really write automation on any plugin with this fader. And this is really fun. There is also a couple of resolutions, really quick, uh, normal. And this pen knob also works as a uh, mouse controller in this mode. It just holds down the mouse left button and moves the mouse up or down. It is really quick and this is really precise. And this is really fun, I think. If you have this channel uh, controller it can also be fun to use panorama knob as a volume controller sometimes and so this is what i did you press these buttons and now you can control volume of the channel with this little knob don't have to touch fader or do anything uh, with quick controls just if you need to adjust the volume you use this knob yeah, it can go back to normal panorama mode. So I hope you find it useful uh, to do uh, all of this crazy remapping. You need to uh, learn some programming, some scripting skills in AutoHotKey, 
but this is really a fantastic program. You can do a lot of things with uh, with it. I'll uh, post the documentation that I found about Mackie, uh, and I did all this mapping uh, just for having a reference what keys, what notes send. Uh, and uh, there are some documentation about Steinberg that I did, what keys these little guys send. If you have some programming skills, I guess you'll be able to implement this for yourself. One more time, you need this software, this is Loop MIDI, you need auto hotkey installed and you need some scripts that do read MIDI and can send MIDI messages. I will post some links in the comments to this video so that you can have some starting point in developing your own scripts. And if you get the idea, you can use this with any controller. You don't need these guys because they are no longer available, unfortunately. But you can use any controller that can send continuous MIDI messages, and just not regular uh, CC messages. It has to be endless rotary controller. Endless rotary controllers send one uh, when you turn it left and send 65 when you turn it right and it never ends. And this is really cool. So I hope you find it useful. Have a great day. Bye. See you.